what's going on today we're going to talk about shellshock vulnerability most of you have heard about shellshock vulnerability several years ago and we know it was it created a fuss like the like the fuss uh, right now look the log 4j vulnerability is doing but let's let's again talk about the shellshock vulnerability and demonstrate an a live example so shellshock affected bash before 4.3 and if you don't know what is bash, then this is a problem. Bash is a shell that allows you to interact with Linux and even Mac. So it allows you to execute commands against Linux or Mac. It affected Apache running CGI bin and also affected OpenSSH running SSHD. So whether you are running OpenSSH or Apache CGI bin, it affected these um, uh, softwares. But basically, since if you, if you if the bash version is before 4.3, it means uh, your system is vulnerable, and the problem is not in Apache or OpenSSH. The problem was in bash itself. Now, what does it allow? Basically, shellshock allows for remote code execution using shell callouts to bash. For example, the example we are taking today, we have a Apache web server. Uh, Apache web server have a directory is it actually here there's a uh, mistake it's a CGI bin G I so we have a web server running a directory called CGI bin and inside CGI bin there is a bash script now we, because bash is before version point uh, 4.3 um, we can execute callouts to the system using bash shell callouts because the bash version or bash before 4.3 allows for shell callouts from the cgi bin directory cgi bin is a directory in the apache web server which allows you to execute shell scripts now payload can be sent simply using cur in http headers you can there are several payloads for the shellshock vulnerability you can select one of them as a proof of concept you can send them using curl in the HTTP headers using the option dash H the exploitation there are multiple ways to exploit the shell shock we have the curl we can send the payload using curl we can use a script called shocker.py or we can use metasploit the mitigation simple update to bash after 4.3 you can do that by just using apt get update in tpn linux or just updating the packages in linux or you can disable the shell callouts in cgi bin one way if you are running if you if, if you if you have a system reliant on bash uh, less than 4.3 you can just disable shell callouts in cgi bin or leave it without any scripts the example we're taking today is a machine from hack the box called http shocker in this machine, there is a web server running uh, on Apache and it has CGI bin directory. The CGI bin contains a script called user.sh. This is a bash script. Now, because there is a script running in CGI bin, we can attempt the shellshock vulnerability against that machine. After we exploit the shellshock in here, uh, we get access to the machine using a reverse shell and then we escalate to root simply by typing sudo l. So let's now move on to the machine and demonstrate the practical scenario. So here we go. We have now the in-map scan. The in-map scan is showing we have port 80 open and we have um, port SSH running on port 2222. Now a simple browse to the web server will reveal that the web server actually is running apache um, cgi bin let's take a look at the web server now how do we know that it's running cgi bin of course we're going to run directory search so once we navigate as you can see we have a simple page and there is a picture coming up saying don't bug me all right i'm not going to bug you so we're going to get back and start directory search drb and then we supply the URL. No need to specify any word list because we're looking for specific directories. These directories are found in the uh, word list, default word list used by directory search. 
So we're looking for the CGI pin. I know it exists, but actually we need to demonstrate that, demonstrate the methodology and how, and how to find that, that directory. So we're gonna move out here and slash CGI slash, uh, not slash, dash bin. So once we access that, we retrieve an error 403 forbidden. You see, we, we don't have access to this directory, which is fine. No one shouldn't have access to this directory. But let's see if we can enumerate further and see since we are trying to uncover a shell shock vulnerability, we knew that there must be some sort of scripts, bash scripts under the CGI pin. So we are able to manipulate them and make them execute system commands. I'm gonna copy that and make directory. As you can see now, we have discovered the CGI pin. I'm gonna stop this now. No need for this to continue since we found the intended directory. And then we're gonna run another directory search but this time we're gonna it's gonna be on CGI bin. Alright, then we're gonna define a word list since we're looking for files under this directory. Dash w slash user share. We're gonna use directory buster word list and then dash common, we're gonna use the common.txt. Share okay, word list. Common. and then since we're looking for specific extensions all right we're going to specify that with the option dash x now the extensions we want to look for are python and python and of course dot sh okay let's look first for python let's see if we have python scripts uh -huh, seems like we have a problem. Let's see. Base URL, word list files, option not stopping on warning messages. I guess it's gonna be big X. Aha, uh -huh, now it worked. Let's see now if we can find any Python scripts and we're gonna run the same command, but using a separate tab. So in here, I'm gonna specify dash or not dash dot sh to indicate we're looking for bash scripts. Now, this is only a demonstration, guys, to show you how it is done. You won't find any Python scripts under the CGI bin directory in this example. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. All right. I'm gonna click X on that. As I told you, this was only for demonstration. And in here, you're gonna find one script called user.sh. And that's how you do it. We're gonna leave that running uh, for demonstration purposes. And we're gonna go to our um, browser and try to access that script, user.sh. So now it offered to download that. We're gonna download this. All right, we're gonna cancel and use curl to find out, about, find out more about the script. So now, okay, let's see. So we are in desktop, w curl, here should be 10, 10, 10, 5, 6, slash CGI bin, slash user sh. So this is the contents of the scripts. Content type, text plane, just an uptime test script. So it does nothing, right? It just checks the uptime, how long has the web server been running. So 20 minutes, 32 seconds, and that's the function of the script. So now, since we have a bash script under the CGI bin directory in the web server, we can now attempt the shell shock vulnerability. So one way to attempt the shell shock is we try to um, do a proof of concept. Okay, so one way to do a proof of concept is to send a payload using curl in the request headers. So let me go to my notes. By the way, you can get the notes by subscribing to the channel membership. The notes are in PDF formats and you can access them using Google Drive. Okay, so let's take now, let's see this one. This one pings my machine. Let's take a look at this one. See how I can modify on this. 
So we paste that, make some amends on the URL, so user.sh, and here we specify the target IP, which is 10, 10, 10, 5, 6. So here, this is uh, we're gonna change this IP address as well. So it's gonna be my IP address. Open a new tab. If config. Copy that and put that here. Now it is ready, right? Just let's open now a listener on my machine and see if we will receive the ping requests from the uh, target machine. So. We highlight the interface, TUN1, we're going to listen on that interface. So we're going to use TCP dump dash I, and then the interface will be TUN1. Uh -huh. We're going to return that as sudo So now we're listening. Alright, let's now issue the ping request. Wait, we're going to go up and let's see if we have received any ping request. Okay, I'm going to, I think I'm going to need to cancel this one because it's making the scan a bit noisy. So I'm going to clear that and go back, clear. Okay, so now right now we're listening and reissue the POC, close that one. Aha, uh -huh. so as you can see here, let's let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the packets. Um, so now, so starting from here, we see the requests to the um, target machine, and then we see the re target machine response using the user.sh with the internal server error. But now we don't see any ping packets. Okay. Seems like the, 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 the command wasn't successful. Let's go back here and see if you can change the command to something else. nc-lvp 4545. Let's see if we can execute reverse shell on the machine instead of the ping. So, okay, this one is good. Let's take that. Now, instead of the ping one, we're gonna provide a bash one-liner I'm going to change the example to user and the target to the correct IP address my port here is going to be 4545 and here is my IP 10 10 14 7 yep 14 7 so the bash one liner is ready and now let's execute that. And indeed I received the reversal. So this is a um, very clear indicator that the machine is actually vulnerable and we were able to exploit that directly as a proof of concept. Now we have the first fault hold on the machine. Okay, how can we demonstrate that another way? Let's say you don't want to do that using the HTTP headers Let's say you want to do that using some sort of automated script. So we have a shocker script called shocker.py. It can be found in GitHub. Let's take a look at the script. So this is the script. All we're going to need to do is to just copy that to our local machine and start it. So split that. Let's do this. We're gonna, um, no, I think I'm doing some wrong stuff here. So cancel this one, clear. And then from here, we're gonna open a new one tab. Have everything lined up. So the first method using cur, that's one. The next method will be using the Python script. So wget, paste in the URL, ls so we have shocker.py now as far as the usage is concerned 
this is the usage so let me scroll down so let's copy that okay so what do we have here we have the port the port will be a bit different 4546 since we have a one being used for 545 so this is this go, so here goes my IP uh, 147 the target IP is 10 10 10 5 6 before kicking that off we need to run another listener and see that that will be four five four six this time right okay now fire that command and again we see receive the second shot so two options right now there is another option which is using metasploit most of you want to use metasploit but in the uh, context of oscp you're not allowed to use metasploit so now id now to escalate the privileges type sudo dash l simple as that as you can see you can run Perl um, without the need for any password as the root user which means we can now run Perl and let Perl execute a bash shell this will execute bash shell as the root user so sudo Perl dash e specify that we are doing a, that we want to execute a command execute and then slash bin slash bash close the double quotes close the single quote and run id aha uh -huh, it has been run so root ls okay pwd so as you can see we are under the cgi bin directory this due to root ls and now we have the root.txt so that was for today. I hope you guys found that informative and see you in the next video.